Hey everybody, so it's been quite a while since I've recorded. Um, there's been a lot going on, um, a lot with the Stephen Nicole with Producer Bert show that I produce. Sorry, I need to get some coffee here. Don't you just love this mug? Introverted, but willing to dis discuss knitting. Okay, that showed it to me backwards, so hopefully it shows you the right way. Otherwise, I might have to flip this video. Anyways. Um, so yeah, there's been a lot going with that. We've been doing a lot of episodes. Definitely check us out if you haven't done that. I have been working uh, tirelessly on my Etsy store and my website store to um, try and get more income coming in. Um, and uh, one of my children have moved back home and we've been driving them to work uh, and picking them up every day. So it's broken up my routine um, that I had gotten used to um, this past year. So uh, it's been a lot difficult. I've had to really massively change how I prep dinner and get dinner ready um, because typically um, I didn't have to go anywhere and my wife would come home around 5.15 ish. So I would start prepping and maybe eating dinner at four o'clock so that it was ready by the time she walked in the door, everything was ready to go, we were ready to eat. Um, but now I have to pick up my child from her work, then straight from there go over to pick up my wife at her work because we only have one vehicle. So I literally have to leave at four o'clock and I don't get back until 5.15. So it's been a challenge because I either have to make dinner before I go and then we have to warm it up and, it, you know, reheated dinner is not always the best. Or I have to wait until I get back and now I'm cooking from 5 to 6 and we don't eat until 6, 6.30. Um, and that's a little too late for us. Um, so I've been doing a lot more. Uh, you would say Instapot um, recipes. I have a Pamper Chef quick cooker that I love. So if you have an Instapot or something, they're wonderful, especially when you've got the accessories to be able to do multiple things. So we've done, I think, pork chops in the quick cooker. Um, that was super easy from frozen. Um, and it literally is just pork chop soda and brown sugar. Um, and they were delicious. Um, if I can't find that, though, I'll, I'll think of something. Um, but we've done uh, meatloaf and potatoes all at once. So, like, the meatloaf is in the top ceramic pot and the potatoes are in the bottom. And then just mash those up when they're done. Um, we've done turkey breast with potatoes or vegetables, um, which we're actually thinking we don't have a lot of people that come over for Thanksgiving as much. So we're thinking... Um, we might just go the turkey breast route from now on instead of buying the whole turkey because a lot of us don't eat dark meat anyways, so all that kind of goes to waste. Um, my mom typically is the only one who will eat that, so she has to eat it all, and it's just too much for her. So we're thinking we may just get a ton of turkey breasts and just go with those. Um, I can heat them up pretty quickly in the quick cooker. I think it only took like 30 minutes. Um, whereas if you read the instructions, it says it takes two hours, two to three hours still to cook that. Um, so if anything, I can always throw more in the oven or just do them in batches. Um, but we might go that route. Um, other than that, what else have we made? I've made a cake in there. That didn't turn out as well um, because I don't think the instructions were very clear. Um, it didn't tell me to cover the cake with tin foil to make sure water didn't get in from the pressure cooker. Um, so it was very wet and wobbly and I had to throw it in the oven to finish it off. The second time around, I used a bunt pan and this time I, I covered it with tin foil, but it still had a hole because my bunt pan has a little thing to lift it. Um, and that had to poke through and I think still some water got in, but not as much. That was a little better. It wasn't as wet, but still not quite as done. I had to put that in the oven as well. Um, so I'm going to have to play with that and see how that works. Um, what else have I done in there? Lots of taco meat. I love with the pressure cooker that I can take a frozen meat and go. And what's been really helpful with my new driving situation is I can prep it 
at at like 2 33 o'clock you know get it all in the quick cooker get it all set up timed ready and i can delay it so i can tell it don't cook for two hours wait until two hours and then start cooking so that by the time we walk in the door at five o'clock with everybody it's done it's ready i may just have to chop it up or mash up the potatoes or make a quick gravy or do something with the sauce that's in there but that only takes a few minutes and then I'm done and we're ready to eat so that has been super super helpful to have um I'm actually I would not mind if I had two of those quick cookers just so that I could have more things going because it is a smaller I mean it's it's a huge pot when you think about it in the grand scheme of things it's a six quart I think is what I have six or eight I think it's a six um, and I do have the accessories. So I have the ceramic pot that can go on the top, and I have um, the vegetable steaming baskets, but I haven't used yet. The egg, the hard boiled. Amy loves it for the hard boiled eggs. Oh my gosh, she can do um, what is it like nine uh, hard boiled eggs all at once um, in the quick cooker in like five minutes, and they're done. And she loves that um, for salads and things. Um, so yeah, it's definitely, if you've never tried an Instant Pot or you've been a little terrified of the whole pressure cooker thing, um, give it a shot. It's been uh, wonderful. And there's ways that you can convert recipes that go in the oven or the slow cooker or whatnot for the for the Instant Pot. Um, those diagrams are easily to find online. But I did take a slow cooker recipe that I had um, and put it in the Instant Pot because it was going to take what did it say six to eight hours to cook and I kind of had fallen asleep and slept in so I didn't have that kind of time but we really needed it for dinner so I just put everything in the instant pot and then pressure cooked it and it was done um in half the time so that was really helpful um it was a little bit of adjustment it was so it was a french dip roast beef sandwich and I don't know if I've ever made those before I don't think I've made the uh, recorded me making them yet um but typically you put the roast beef in and you um, pour over an onion soup, a French onion soup mix on it, and then you cover it with water until it's just covering the roast on the slow, in the slow cooker. Um, and then you set it on low, or is it on high for four to six, on low for six to eight. Um, and the time that I had gotten up and gotten that ready from frozen, um, it would not be done until like seven or eight o'clock at night and i was like oh crap so instead i put it all in the quick cooker and i set it for its beef pork or no beef setting it's beef is it beef pork setting and um it had said that it was going to take 30 minutes for 35 minutes and I was like, eh, this is kind of a thick roast and it was kind of long and, and I didn't want to put as much water in it. So I did not cover the roast, but I did do, I think, two cups of water with the French onion mix. Um, and so I was like, eh. so I did it for 40 minutes, I believe. And it's, it was cooked, it was done, but it wasn't fall apart, um, tender for the sandwiches like I would need. I couldn't easily shred it. So I put it back in and did it again for another 25 to 30, I think. Um, and that was better. So even still, it still cut the time in half. I didn't have to wait four hours. It was literally like just an hour and I was good to go. Um, so that's been great. Uh, I want to try a cheesecake in it. And oh, my skin is all dry. But yeah, I want to try cheesecake and... Um, some other stuff um so yeah and taco meat making taco meat in there is super easy um i don't even have to thaw the meat i just throw the the our turkey our ground turkey in there and um with a little bit of water uh cook that and then when it's done i drain it break up the meat put it back in the quick book cooker on the uh, saute or uh, sear function, um, throw in the required water and taco seasoning and just stir it up until it's all cooked through and I'm done. So yeah, it's been, it's been really good to have that. I think it was t a timely purchase because um, I did not realize we didn't know that we would have to be driving uh, a child around. And, and so that 
that would be the, the time of dinner making that I normally would have. So this was a perfect purchase to foresee that. So that's my spiel on the quick cooker. Um, what else has been going on? I have not been able to get back to reading um, VB for, before six, but we have been trying, I've been trying to make sure that all of the meals that I do make are more rounded. Um, in the past, we'd make one item. So we'd have beef stroganoff, that'd be it. Or we, I would make meatball sliders and that would be it. Or I'd make um, a, a t chicken breast that's been breaded or, or something. And maybe there may be some vegetables that go with it. And that's it. I've been trying with these. So like we had uh, the roast turkey. So I had the roast turkey and I had made the potatoes in the bottom. So there was roast turkey. There was potatoes. It came with a gravy packet. So I finished off with some gravy. And then um, from that, I then also made a salad. One night we did meatloaf with the potatoes, and again, I made a vegetable. Uh, we had some leftover carrots, I think, or broccoli, so I made a vegetable. And then I tried to also make another salad. So I've been trying to round out the dinner a little more, so we're getting all of the, the food groups um, instead of just the one item. Um, it's been a little bit more work, but I think that's been better for us. Um, just just being more mindful of okay we've got a meat we've got some vegetable we need some greens we need a little bit of bread or something um and then i haven't done a whole lot of desserts i think that cake that we did the other night was the first of many pardon me my i'm picking at my hand here because it is it is dry as crap i don't know if you can see that look at that all of a sudden it just is dry and in between my fingers here gets a little dry sometimes so I'm gonna pull out my my Lanache lotion bar I picked this up at the knitting store um, that I used to go to um, a lot I don't remember the last time I used this actually it might be it might be melted shut oh there we go it popped open um, oh I don't even think I I haven't even opened this one oh, I love this one because this one is uh, lemongrass and it smells oh just amazing just amazing and you just rub it just rub it and then just rub her in so try and remember if you're if so, because there's people all over the United States that are kind of watching this, um, and if you're not, you should be. Um, in in the Midwest, where we have winter, um, for those that don't have to deal with snow, it gets dry up here um, in the winter. Uh, the cold air really does dry out the air, and so your hands will crack and and stuff. Oh, that smells just nubby. So it's important to make sure you keep dry, keep hydrated, um, and lotion up. That was actually a little bit too much lotion. I don't like greasy lotions at all. I am not a greasy lotion person. Um, and I have to be careful with these because this does have, um, I believe it has lanolin. No, it does not. Oh, thank God. Soy wax, unrefined shea butter, and fragrance. Um, there are some that have lanolin, and I can't use that because, or I can't use it much, because my wife is allergic to lanolin in sheep. Um... And so that's actually not good for her <laughs> when there's things that have lanolin. And if I'm, you know, putting lanolin on and then I just start touching things. Anyways, I'm digressing here. Back to food, Bert. Back to food. Um, so I haven't eat, I haven't um, been reading much of my VB6. But I have been trying to be a little bit more mindful of what I 
uh, feed everybody. Um, we have our trip coming in April, and I need to be able to fit in an airplane seat, and that worries me a little bit. So, I got, got to squish down my pute. Um, okay, I've been talking for 17 minutes, and, and I don't know if I have a food thing to show you. <laughs> I know I have some backup video that I have kept that I haven't shown you guys of things. Um, I think Pasta Primavera is in there. I think there might be a goulash one. I don't know. I'll put something at the end. <laughs> I'm so nice and helpful, aren't I? It'll be a surprise. Um, I think, did I ever show Christmas cookies? I know I made some, but I don't know if I actually recorded those or not. So, I apologize for not recording in quite a while. I will get better at that, I promise. Um, if you miss me, um, you don't exactly always see me, but sometimes you hear me on the Stephen Nicole Show with Producer Bird. Um, so definitely go and um, subscribe to that. Check us out. Mainly where you can see us on our website, stephennicoleshow.com, or, or Facebook, or YouTube. Um, but yeah, we do a lot of live shows, too, uh, on, on Facebook. So check those out. Um, Super Chunky Podcast, we haven't recorded. I don't think we recorded anything last year, except maybe, maybe early, early in the year. Um, and that was it. Um, just been a lot going on with uh, the place that we volunteer at, the Minnesota Geological Society. So um, it's just been quite a busy year, I think. For somebody who didn't have a job, it's been a really busy year, and it was weird. <laughs> So I'll wrap up. Um, definitely check out those things that I've mentioned before. Um, one of the things I think I'm going to try to do, um, if you don't follow me on Facebook, on the Cooking with Bert um, Facebook page, please do. Also join the group um, if you are interested. One of the things that I'm going to try and do is um, share with you what my weekly meal plan is for the week. Um, I've been hearing from a lot of people that just trying to the, – the, the activity of trying to find the recipes, gather them together, and come up with some sort of a meal plan for the week can sometimes be a little time-consuming. They don't have time for it, or it's a little bit of a challenge. So if, if me give, showing you mine with – and I'll put links to what I've picked so you can get the recipes um, if there is a link. Some of them are home recipes, and I'll try to figure out a way to share those. Um then, then, then I'm all for it. So I'll probably do those either on a Saturday or a Sunday because that's usually when I do my meal plan and my shopping. So I'll do those um, and I'll post the, the a picture of the my screenshot of my meal plan and then I'll try to link them in the comments or in the post itself with how to get those recipes. Um, but I would love to see your guys' as well. If you're doing the same thing and your meal, you've got a complete meal plan, please share it. Um, probably better in the group. Um, the Facebook page, you actually have to go to visitor posts to see any kind of posts um, and it doesn't always tell me when people post things so it's probably better for that kind of thing to if you're going to share them definitely join the group the Facebook group and we can all share together in there and be inspired help each other with uh, new recipes and things we've tried so that is that um, enjoy and be on the lookout for those and hopefully I'll have a food cooking thing at the end of this episode if not I apologize um, I'll be more vigilant about that and we'll see you soon so now we are going to be making lemon bars this is my great aunt's recipe um, that I've modified slightly just to make it a little easier to work with so here we go okay so we need to take a cup of flour with butter and powdered sugar. Oh, actually I need to do the pan first. So I'm gonna take some of the butter that I had reserved for this. And I am going to butter the bottom of the pan. Okay. And then we're going to put that half a cup of butter right in there. Get out some parchment paper and the scissors because I need this 8 by 12, I think. So I love this parchment paper because it has lines for me to cut. I'm just lining the bottom of that.
just so that it's easier to get out later. So a cup of flour, a half a cup of butter, and then a cup of powdered sugar. We are going to mix that together. Ooh. Maybe I should put my shield on. Because I make a mess. Okay. I'm just mixing that slightly. here and then we just want a crumbly crust so then I'm going to mix that butter by hand here This is the, probably the trickiest part because we want it to be a crust, but we want to make sure everything's mixed together. There's still a lot loose here. So you gotta squeeze and mix. it into the bottom of our 8x8 eight eight pan and spread it out if we need to so that there are no thick spots. So now once the oven is ready, we will bake that at 325 for 20 minutes. So while the oven's preheating and that's getting ready, we're going to move on to the next piece, which is we're going to beat the eggs with a cup of sugar. There's a cup, one or half a cup. And a cup. Okay. Baking powder is a half a teaspoon of baking powder. Baking powder half a teaspoon of baking powder, a fourth a cup of lemon juice, I should be using the correct one, but I don't want to use that really big measuring cup just for this. Do you want this still? No, I'm, I don't need it if you don't need it. And then two tablespoons of flour to thicken it up. There's one. fluff up that reminded me that yes it needs a whisk so that they do meringue and eyes. Mm, oh, that sounds so as the thing was cooking I mixed up the uh, filling and then I put it in the fr covered it and put it in the fridge so that it would stay cold and then I put everything away forgetting that I would need to record this next session so this is gonna be a little awkward uh, view. Here's the filling 
and we're gonna pour it in. So there it looks. Make sure before you pour it that you, if you've stored it in the fridge for a little bit to finish off the baking, that you um, stir it again, because I forgot to do that and there was a bunch of sugar at the bottom. So I tried to mix it gently in the pan there. Um, but now we will put this back in the oven for another 25 minutes on 325. And then when it's done, we'll take it out and brush on some powdered sugar and we'll be good. Okay, so I've taken it out of the oven and I've let it cool for, oh, hour or so. Um, and it's nice and firm now. I tried taking it out of the pan um, and it didn't quite work and I ripped um, the parchment. So make sure you do two pieces, probably one like I have and then one going the other way just so it's a little easier to get it out of the pan. Um, but they look wonderful. I can't wait to try them.